Okay. Um, do I put this in? Yes. Yes. Um, so I guess I'll introduce myself. Everybody else, the uh, people I work with, are at the Nanos conference. Uh, so I'm flying solo. Um, anyway, my name is Victor Wong. I'm a PUI4 neurology resident. Uh, and I'm here to briefly tell you about a case of really bad optic neuritis. <coughs> so uh, this was a case that was seen by Dr. Warner in 2008, or starting in 2008. Is a 23 year old woman that presented with painless vision loss in her left eye over the two months prior to her first presentation. Um, on exam, her visual acuity was 2100 in her left eye and 2030 in her right eye. She had no APD, uh, her optic nerve was normal, and she had a normal OCT. Um, at that visit, um, her visual fields um, in her left eye, she had a uh, superior left quadrant defect and a uh, very high um, superior altitude. Her retinal nerve fiber layer was uh, normal at that visit. And then over the course of a month, um, her right eye felt worse and uh, blurriness, so she was uh, diagnosed with bilateral sequential optic neuritis. Uh, they did an MRI that showed bilateral optic nerve enhancement on T2 with no evidence of demyelinating disease. So they started treatment with IV methylprednisolone per ONTT protocol. And she got a little better. Uh, one month later, further history, um, her mother came in and said that her grandmother was born. So that's for some genetic analysis, and they found an uh, 11778 uh, mutation, which is one of the labor's mutations. So she was started on coenzyme 210 at that. Um, overall, she improved on IV and PO steroids, relapsed at one year, and then responded again to steroid treatment. At her follow-up at one year, um, they got another MRI, uh, showed no further enhancement of her optic nerves, but showed new periventricular lesions um, concerning for multiple sclerosis. This met the McDonald criteria for diagnosis, so she was started on MS treatment and then also continued on IV pulse steroids depending on her fluctuating vision um, changes. She responded pretty well each time. This is the MRI from that, um, that visit. Oh, you can see the uh, So on the axial cut on the left side, um, you can see a couple new lesions, periventricular, and then on the right side, a little lesion on the side of the cut. So that made, um, made us question whether there's a link between Lieber's or LHON and MS. Um, it's sparsely described and mostly in case studies. Uh, appears to be higher than chance the coexistence of these two. But it's hard to study since LHON is relatively rare. But uh, multiple sclerosis is pretty common. Uh, it's the most common demyelinating disease in the CNS. Um, characterized by multiple areas of demyelination with loss of all and exercise and as a little scarring. Uh, there's some clinical features for MS. Um, it's not specific, but um, MS presents usually in a relapsed intervening um, pattern. Uh, age of onset is 15 to 50. Uh, other symptoms include optic neuritis, INO, the knee sign, fatigue. Uh, who talks to the non uh, As far as the diagnosis of MS, um, the most, well, relatively most recent is the McDonald criteria that I kind of uh, mentioned earlier. Um, this came out in 2010, and that's the, you've probably heard of the dissemination in space and time. Um, the dissemination of space is basically defined as one or more T2 lesions on two of the uh, MS typical regions. These are the periventricular, infracontorial, spinal cord, and juxtacortical regions. And dissemination of time means uh, simultaneous enhancing lesions and non-enhancing lesions, uh, or a new lesion on a follow-up MRI, or the development of a second clinical attack. 
just recently, uh, the Magnums um, group, which is uh, it's magnetic resonance imaging in MS, uh, a couple months ago came out with stricter criteria for the diagnosis in uh, for dissemination of space, which is because we get uh, as as MRI imaging improves, we can try to hone in on um, uh, diagnosis better. And so again, there's the 2010. Uh, McDonald criteria, which I just mentioned, but in 2016, they added a couple things, and it's two of the following, which is three or more paraventricular lesions, again, the infratemporal lesion and spinal cord lesion, and then they added um, an optic nerve lesion as uh, part of criteria as well, and then cortical and just cortical lesions. <coughs> it's just an example of a more typical MRI in a multiple sclerosis patient. On the left again, an axial cut with several um, lesions, and then on the right is the sagittal cut with um, oh. so um, these uh, lesions coming off the ventricle. Um, you probably heard the term Dawson's fingers, and so that's typical MS. Uh, as far as labors, or LHON, uh, there are three mitochondrial <coughs> DNA mutations at positions 11, 7, 78, uh, 14, 484, and 34, 60. These are missense mutations in the subunit genes for electron transport chain. Um, they can cause profound impairment in the complex one dependent ATP synthesis. And clinically, um, LHON is a maternally inherited form of blindness um, characterized by loss of retinal ganglion cells and optic nerve degeneration. Uh, prognosis is poor. Uh, <coughs> onset's usually between 10 and 30 years. Um, it's usually pretty severe bilateral vision loss, um, and the visual defect usually starts with a central or supercentral scotoma. Uh, it's predominantly male and rare. So why do we care? Um, so there's a lot of similarities between the two LHON and MS, uh, including the age of onset, uh, vision involvement, central vision loss with the near normal fundus. But there are a lot of differences in that um, LHON is more common in men, whereas MS is uh, more, uh, there are more women affected by MS. Uh, LHON patients usually have only two visual events that are, um, and both eyes separated within six months. It's usually pain, painless and permanent, and this is um, not quite like MS, where you can have several visual events. It affects the object nerves and sometimes painful and uh, response to steroids. And then finally, to complicate issues, there's the combination element. LHON-MS, which has recently been described, um, Harding was the first one to describe it, so it's sometimes called Harding's disease. And this is a concurrent LHON and MS. One study looked at all the uh, LHON diagnoses in the UK and found five cases of concurrent uh, diagnoses. Um, so in that paper, considering that normal MS prevalence in the UK is one in a thousand, they conclude that the co-occurrence is 50 times greater uh, than chance. Uh, just FYI, the Utah MS rate is a lot higher, um, estimated to be about 1 in 100. So um, for patients it, with the combination LH1 and MS, it's usually women. Um, some of them have more than two visual events, and usually there's a long interval between both eyes being affected, one and a half years to 17 years. So that raises a lot of questions in the literature, um, several of them. Uh, does MS inflammatory stress provoke women to show symptoms of LHON? Is this a coincidence? Uh, is there an interaction between mitochondrial dysfunction and immunologic mechanism? And finally, is LHON MS a different entity from LHON or MS by themselves? So as far as treatment, um, you probably all know that LHON doesn't really have uh, established treatment, but there is a theoretical benefit of antioxidants. 
Um, Indevinil or CoQ10 has been prescribed. Um, there is a new intravitreal injection study um, done by Asim and Palm. Um, so that's all there is for LHON. For MS, What's the medication? I don't know. <laughs> uh, for MS, there's uh, several treatments now uh, for attacks. We usually use steroids and plasma paresis. <laughs> And there's a lot of uh, disease modifying therapies, including beta interferons, the tumor, um, and the rest. And then finally, um, for the combination, um, because there's still this question of whether it exists or not, um, there's only one case report with a description on treatment specifically for this, where they found that in this patient who had optic neuropathy, um, she did respond to IV methylprednisolone, but she did have spastic paraparesis, um, which is more of a multisclerosis uh, symptom, which improved with indebenone, worsened without, and then improved again when we started. So again, the question is maybe, is this an MS-like syndrome driven by a mitochondrial pathology? Uh, so for follow-up, um, of that patient that I talked about. Um, she was diagnosed with both MS and LHOM. She's tried on a variety of MS drugs in addition to steroids. <coughs> stabilized, worsened, stabilized, worsened. In 2010, she had a new lesion, so at that point we started on IVIG with IV steroids in combination with MS treatment. And she kind of continued this course and stabilized and was seen last month um, now on Jelenia, which is a PO uh, MS drug. At that uh, visit, her visual acuity was 2300 in her right eye and 2100 in left eye, and she's still on PO Q10. Um, her visual fields are stable, a little worse, but in the same uh, pattern. And retinal fiber layer um, shows thin in both eyes. So that's it. Um, thanks, everybody. <laughs> Did you find out the uh, uh, SIU type thing in here? Um, it's gene therapy. Yeah. Oh, it's right. 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 That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I was going to comment. Most of the therapies that are in current clinical trials are all gene therapy. But I don't remember which gene they're looking at. MD4. MD4. Is that it? Thank you. Okay, thanks.